So I'd like to go into a little bit more detail about import demand and export supply curves, which is an alternative to the standard domestic supply and demand curves that we uh, might more likely use in this course. And sometimes these uh, import demand and export supply versions are more convenient, more useful, just depends on the, the situation that we're, we're looking at. So import demand is when the quantity demanded inside the domestic economy is greater than the quantity supplied. And if the world price is less than the price inside the domestic market, you'll import. So on the left-hand side here, we've got the supply and demand curve uh, for the, uh, the domestic uh, supply and domestic demand. And at this price P1, we have zero imports. Okay, that's the, the world price of P1 would not provide any incentive for this country to import the product. But if the price internationally were to go to P2, what you would have is this much quantity supplied domestically and this much quantity demanded domestically. So with this, so you have positive levels of imports. So if we translate that over into this graph at P2, what we get is a level of imports where these, these imports that I've drawn here is equal to Q3 minus Q2. Okay, it's at that price you will import that that amount. And if you put all of the possible combinations together, what you're going to get is an import demand curve, where the uh, vertical axis is the autarky price for this country. Okay? Now you've seen this before in another, in another uh, uh, video. Export supply would be the same kind of relationship where at the price P1, there are no exports, but if the price goes up to say P3, you'll have this amount of exports. So if we translate that over to this graph over here, we have a level of exports associated with P3, which is exactly the same thing as over here. And if we connect all the different possible prices that are greater than the autarky price, then you would induce firms to export this product into the international market. Now, I do want to uh, go into a little bit of detail on a linear version of this with, with specific equations so you can see how this might uh, work. And when we talk about, for example, the, the impact of, of, uh, of tariffs and other types of um, trade policy interventions, we can use import demand just as easily as the uh, domestic uh, supply, domestic um, uh, uh, demand. So the particular example that I've got up here uh, with the demand curve and supply curve is a combination that we've seen before in previous videos. So I want to continue with that example. And you'll recall that in autarky, with this set of relationships, that the autarky price was $90 and the associated quantity that's both supplied and demanded is equal to 20. So we have this combination, which is the analog to that point right here in this graph. So we have where supply and demand equal each other. Okay. And so the import demand is going to be equal to whatever the quantity demanded is minus the quantity supplied. And if the world price is greater than that autarky price, you're going to have positive imports. Now let's go, let's look at this 
in a, a, a bit more detail using the specific example. So what I've done here with, uh, um, so let's go back to this. So uh, we have equation A, where price is a function of quantity demanded. This version, call it A prime, is simply rewriting equation A, solving for QD, so isolating QD, and so that the quantity demanded is a function of price. And we do the same thing for equation B. Okay, so that looking at this one right here, we isolate QS and we get this B prime. So now we have an expression for the quantity demanded and quantity supplied as a function of price. So if we take that and plug it into this equation, so QD minus QS, what we're going to get is 65 minus 1 half P, okay, that's the quantity demanded, and we subtract out the value for the quantity supplied. Okay, I've just rewritten that a little bit. And if you do the calculations, what you're going to get is that the imports will be equal to 67.5 minus 3 fourths P. If you give me a level of a domestic or an international price, I can tell you what the imports will end up being. So let's say that the world price is 50. Okay, that's lower than the autarky price of 90. So what do we get when we plug that into this equation? Well, the imports are going to be 67.5 minus 3 fourths multiplied times 50. And you'll find that that, do the, the math on that, we will have imports of 30 at that, at that price of, of 50. And, and you can do that for any number of different prices and you will get the level of imports associated with uh, that price. And you should, may just try on your own if you plug in a price of 90, that autarky price, you ought to get imports being equal to zero. I'll let you do that on your own. Okay, so I guess we've done this one already. So, if we take a look at this equation, again, 67, so import demand is 67.5 minus 3 fourths times P, you're going to get this import demand curve that has these two um, y, uh, vertical and horizontal intercepts. So I'd, I'd like you to, on your own, well, we'll do the first one. If P is zero, it's immediately going to be obvious that the level of imports is 67.5. Kind of a weird example where the uh, price is zero, but that's what it would be. And imports would start whenever <clears throat> the uh, world price is below 90. So the example that we had with 50, this isn't really drawn to scale, is that we would uh, find out that the, the level of imports is 30. Now this is giving us exactly the same information, just done in a different way. We 
Oops, it's not my D. So really, this is just a different way of writing the same thing. Okay. Now, what about export supply? That's going to be a situation where the amount of, of uh, domestic quantity demanded is going to be less than the, the supply, that is, that the quantity supplied minus the quantity demanded is greater than zero. And we can use the same equation, because that really, that equation that we derived earlier is really the difference between the quantity demanded and the quantity supplied. So let's suppose that the price equal uh, to one to one hundred. If we do that, you're going to see that this value is going to be negative. The amount that is going to be uh, demanded is going to be less than the amount that is going to be supplied. In other words, you export. So if we were to draw this with exports on this axis and the uh, world price over here, What we would have is that the exports, there would be an increase in export supply when the price is above the autarky price. So I'm going to leave it on your own to see what value of exports are associated with a world price of 100. Okay? So this is a, the basic equation version of the export supply and import demand. Uh, these uh, export supplies and import demand curves have elasticities. They have a sensitivity to the price, which can sometimes be useful. And just as a uh, kind of a, a recollection of, of how we might think about this is uh, Do one more quick example with this. So let's say that this country was a small country in its import market. Price. at 90. Okay, so this is the import demand for a small country in its import market. The, as we've talked about before, the world export supply curve is horizontal. It is perfectly elastic. You give me a price on the international market, I can change the import demand inside this small country, the world price doesn't change. What you might change is the domestic price internally if you have some sort of intervention like a tariff. And you would have an analog on this on the uh, export supply curve. Okay, well, so let's, enough of that. Just give you, uh, uh, wanted to give you a quick review of how one could uh, implement this exports export supply and import demand curve using a specific equation.